Thank you for tuning into Bethel, BHG TV. Like, share, and subscribe. Now our host, Pastor Johnson. All right, brothers and sisters, it's good to be here. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see all of you. Glad that you are here. This is Wednesday. We told you we on last night we'll be back early. Listen, we were on Sunday night, um, Monday night, or Monday night and Tuesday night, I believe it was Monday and Tuesday, and we dealt with uh, a series, uh, Did Jesus Resurrect on a Sunday? And um, this is part three. Uh, I encourage you to go back and look at part one, look at part two. Okay, you have to go back and look at those to get some good understanding from tonight. But tonight is going to be some icing, icing on the cake. So uh, we're going to not waste any time because, brothers and sisters, tonight is Wednesday night Q&A. And I encourage everybody to always tune in to Wednesday night Q&A. You learn so much. So let's get underway and get into this lesson so we can get started and recognize those that are over in our chat room. Let's do this. Psalms 111 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise, and do it forever. Let me highlight this right here. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Um... In order to, what we have learned over the past three days is the fact that um, we learned that Jesus was placed in the grave after three and before six, before the sun went down. Because that's the way it was in Jerusalem during those days because it was during the spring equinox. And it's during the spring equinox, there's 12 hours in the day, 12 hours in the night in Jerusalem. So, uh, what we learned is, is that whenever Jesus was placed in the grave, whatever time that was, three days and three nights later, he must resurrect. We learned that in lesson one. We're going to summarize some of this and, and, and get underway, but I just have to go over just to say to the chat room, I want to say Brother Noel Barry was the first in the chat room. Mary Scott Maslin, first from Cleveland, Ohio. Antoinette Simpson from Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland is big in the house tonight. Sister Antoinette, I still got my coffee cup. Thank you very much. Uh, I had a wonderful time. I think I'm on the, I think I'm on the, uh, calendar for Cleveland. I think I saw Cleveland. But peace out to y'all up there in Cleveland. The Cleveland, Ohio class, IOG Cleveland, has a nice new building. Shout out. Shout out. Will Turner getting that thing together up there. There is Sister Brenda Beauclair Hayden. How you doing, Sister Brenda? So glad to see you from Riverdale. Uh, Sister Brenda, I was in town, and I know that you sent word, and I sent word back, but it, it was just good. They took care of me. They took care of me. I got me got my copy of the lesson, and um, thank you. I don't know if you had anything to do with that, but I got it because I'm so used to you giving it to me. So thank you very much. Um a good understanding have all they to do is commandments. Let me jump into this real quick. We learned that in several passages, being in, in, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, we learned that Jesus was in the grave and he would resurrect on the third day. It's, it's common knowledge, brothers and sisters, as we recap this. And we're going to get in tonight. The lesson is... Why did Jesus tell Mary not to touch him? We're going to get into that. Uh, but in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, 
we learn that Jesus died for our sins, right? And that he was buried, he rose again, and the third day, he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now keep in mind, Jesus and the disciples who became apostles, even during the days of Paul, the scriptures were Genesis through Malachi. So everybody knows that Jesus rose again according to the scriptures, the third day. So where are we going to see that? Jesus told us where to find it, right here. Let's go to Matthew, the 12th chapter, verse 40. Listen to this. Matthew 12 and 40, this is what happened. Jesus said, for as Jonas, let's go back up here, because they asked him to give him a sign, the scribes and the Pharisees, like everybody is looking for signs of things. Everybody can't wait to uh, April the 8th for the eclipse because they're looking for a sign. But this is what Jesus said. He answered and said unto them, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. The only sign that we should be looking for is the signs that Jesus tells us that we should be looking for. If you're looking for any other sign, be careful. Because you could fit, you could fit into the category of wanting to see some sort of sign so quick you could be in that category of being an evil and adulterous generation that seeketh after a sign. But here's what Jesus says. And there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Here's the sign. Here it is where it's in the scriptures. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And therefore, after that, he's going to rise. So that's why we can go back to Corinthians, and it says, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, because back in Matthew 12, chapter, he told us where to look for that, look for that sign. This is how it's there. And we also know that in the book of Luke, Jesus had already told his disciples he said, all the Psalms, all the prophets, all the prophets speak concerning me. He says, all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of the, uh, Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Jesus also said he opened up their understanding when he started to show them. This is after his resurrection that they might understand what? The scriptures. And he said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behoove Christ, check this out, to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. This is why, brothers and sisters, if you're keeping things like Passover, you're keeping the feast days, you are keeping the commandments. And you will have a good understanding of things. A good understanding have all they to do is commandments. So you know that he could not have been killed on Good Friday. Because you know that when they said that the preparation day came in, was coming in, or the Sabbath drew on, for that day was a preparation day, and that day was a high day. Because you keep the commandments, you know that there's other Sabbaths other than the weekly Sabbath. Why? Because you're keeping the feast days. You have that understanding because you're doing his commandments. But folks who don't do his feast days and keep the things he says do, they don't understand that there's more than one type of Sabbath. There's more Sabbath. There's other Sabbaths than the weekly Sabbath. What we understand there's annual Sabbaths also. And we also understand that Passover is a memorial. And the next day, being the Feast of Unleavened Bread, is the first day of the seven-day feast where it's a Sabbath. 
And the last day of that seven-day feast is a Sabbath. So therefore, we understand that the Sabbath that they were talking about, that Jesus was placed in the grave. And they wanted to hurry up and get him there so that his body is not on the cross or on the tree on the Sabbath day. Not Friday going into the seven-day Sabbath, but on Passover going into the Sabbath of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So we understand that because a good understanding have all they to do his commandments. You won't be confused to some of this stuff. I want to say shout out to so many of you all over there in the Facebook side. Shout out to all of you all. Shout out to Brother Mark P., our first moderator. And we got Pontiac, Michigan in the house. We got IOG Riverdale in the house. And Brother Thomas Washington, how you doing? Thank you for being here, my brother. All right, on the Facebook side. So let's keep going. Let's get into this lesson tonight. Why did Jesus say to Mary not to touch me? And let me throw in another question. What does that have to do with what day Jesus resurrected? Whether or not he resurrected on a Sunday. Everything in the world. When Jesus told Mary not to touch him, it has everything in the world to show you that Jesus did not resurrect on a Sunday. Wow. Is it like that? Yes. It's, it, it is, brothers and sisters. What we did learn in timeline is this, in the previous two lessons. We knew that whenever you put Jesus in the grave, whatever time that is, it must be three days and three nights later. After that, he's going to resurrect. So we also learn over the lesson from last night that Jesus was placed in the grave on Passover, which was the 14th day of the first month. And in the year, in the year that Jesus was crucified, Passover fell on the middle of the week. We know that because Daniel told us he was going to be cut off in the middle of the week. And we know that that was on a Wednesday or the fourth day of the week because they didn't have names to the weeks then. These names we have today are pagan, but it's still the fourth day of the week. So commonly called Wednesday. So he was placed in the grave between three, after three, and before the sun went down. Therefore, three days and three nights later, Wednesday to Thursday, one day, Thursday to Friday, two days, Friday to Saturday, three days and three nights. It's just that simple. The brother asked last night, said it was a Thursday crucifixion. We showed him it cannot be a Thursday crucifixion because if he died on Thursday, Thursday to Friday would be one day, Friday to Saturday between three and six, would be two days and two nights. And from Friday to Saturday, he must be in the grave 72 hours, which would be between three and six. And we know that that don't hold because Mary went there very early on the first day of the week while it was yet dark and he was already gone. So, what other evidence can we use to show you that Jesus had to have resurrected on a Saturday as we count it from Wednesday? It's in this statement right here. Let's go look at it. Let's go look at this statement that Jesus made to Mary in St. John, the 20th chapter. Let's go take a look at it. Here's what Jesus said. Mary, Mary, first of all, established some, some timelines. 
The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early. What time? When it was yet dark. On the way of learning something, let me let me just plug this in real quick. For all of the people out there teaching, and it's, a, it's among the Hebrew understanding people, they're teaching that a day don't begin until the sun comes up. When the sun comes up, that's when a day starts. So there are some people who don't start their Sabbath until the seventh day of the week when the sun comes up because they say that's when the day starts. Well, we hold to the fact that the evening and the morning, the evening is when the day ends and when the next day starts. We hold to that fact. But here's something, because people say, well, it's still dark. So the day don't begin until the sun is out. Well, you got a problem then. Right here, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene. When was it? The first day of the week. What time was it? When it was yet dark. That's it. Let's keep going. She saw the stone way to rolled away from the sepulcher. Other accounts will tell you that he's gone. And she told his disciples they have taken him away because he was not there the first day of the week while it was yet dark. But later on, later on, let's read something. But because Mary went, Peter, John came up running. They didn't see him. They left. Mary stayed there. But listen to this. But Mary stood without at the, at the sepulcher. I means she stood on the outside weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. She seeth two angels sitting in white, the one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had, had lain. That means past tense. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. When she had thus said, she turned herself back, and saw Jesus standing and knew that it was not and knew not that it was Jesus. She saw him but didn't know it was him. The Bible don't tell us why, but we could just, you know, maybe because she didn't expect to see him alive. Who knows? But she didn't know it was Jesus. Listen to this. She said, un, Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom thou seekest? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, if you have taken him out of here, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, let me just highlight this, Mary. Now, she knows the gardener don't know her name. But when Jesus, who she didn't know it was Jesus at the time, said, Mary, look at what happened. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni. Remember, she turned herself. Here's one reason why she probably didn't know, because she had turned. She, she had turned away. Up here it says something about uh, Mary stood at the outside of the sepulcher and um, she's, she says, because I don't know where they had laid him. And she had thus said she turned herself backwards. She saw Jesus. She turned herself back. But now she turns herself back around. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. What would you do if you was Mary and you realized it's him? Exactly what she went to go do. She said, Jesus said unto her, touch me not. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. And here's why. For I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, 
I ascend unto my Father. I'm getting ready to go up to my Father and to your Father and to my God and to your God. Go tell them that I'm going up, but don't touch me. And all of these people have written books with doctorate degrees coming out of seminary school and all of that. I've read some stuff, brothers and sisters. Oh, Mary, he wouldn't let Mary touch him because she was a woman. Where do you see that written? Nowhere. Speculation. We can only go by what we read. So why did Jesus tell her, touch me not? Because I have not ascended to my father. Go to my brother and say unto them, I ascend to my father and your father and to my God and your God. What did Mary do? She told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that, and that he had spoken these things to her. He's going up. But listen to this. Listen to this. Then the same day at evening. It's now, that was early in the morning. But here is now the same day in the evening, still being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, the, the, the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. And the doors are shut. They locked. They, they scared. They are scared. And with the doors shut, what happened? Here comes Jesus, and he stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. And what did he do? He showed him his hands and his side. In one scripture, he tells him, handle me. Let's go to uh, the book of, let's go, let's go to one of the other books. Let's go to the uh, Matthew, the 28th chapter. Let's see what happens in that account. Let's go see what happened when Jesus resurrected. Let me go to uh, Matthew. This is where he departed. Uh, all hell that came to him by feet and worship him. Then Jesus said, "Be not afraid. Be not afraid, brothers. Go tell my brethren that they go up into Galilee, and there they should see me." Now, when they were going, behold, some of some of the watch that came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all things that were done. This is talking about when they had to take that money. I want to get past that. Uh, this account doesn't go into that much. So that's good. Let's go and find out what Mark says. Because you got to read all four of them. Let's go to Mark, the 16th chapter. And let's skip down. Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared unto Mary Magdalene, of whom he had cast out seven devils. And she told him, and she went and told them uh, that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they when they had heard that he was alive and had seen her, they didn't believe her. They didn't believe her. All right? Let's keep going. And afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at me. Afterward, John says it was the same day of the week. And upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Did it? And so he had to deal with them. And that's all that we're going to get from this. Then after he had spoken to them, he was received up in heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Now we know that this didn't happen right away. He didn't, he was, he didn't um, go to the Father until some 40 days later. But this um, apostle is giving it to you as things went from the start until he left permanently, until he returns again. 
So now let's go to Luke. Because I like reading all of the accounts. Because one will give you some information that the other one doesn't. So let's go over here. Let's go down to this one. And as they thus spake, Jesus Jesus himself stood in the, in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. They were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen the Spirit. He said unto them, Why are you troubled? Why, why do these thoughts rise in your hearts? He says, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me. Wait a minute. He's allowing them to handle him and see for yourself. For a spirit have not flesh and bones as ye, uh, as ye see me have. I'm not a ghost. I'm not invisible. Handle me. Look at my hands. So the question is tonight, why could Mary not touch him and the same night later that day that's what, it, that's what we find here. The same day at evening, why do we find that he's telling them, handle me. Look at my hands and my feet. Handle me. Here's why, brothers and sisters. And here's the answer to that question. Here's the answer. It's, it's, it's very simple. If you understand it. We're going to go to the fact that Jesus is the first fruits. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And we're going to look at something. We're going to learn something from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Let's go look at what we're going to learn from this. And what we're going to learn is in verse 20, something is being said. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in, in every man in his order, in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. So Christ is the first fruits of those that could be resurrected from the dead. That's why he's the first fruits of them that slept. He's the first one. Nobody has ever died, resurrected, and became spirit. The little boy that hit his head and the mother got on the horse and rode to the prophet. And the prophet came back to the house, made everybody go downstairs, and he laid on top of the boy, and breath came back into him. He was dead. He became alive. He was brought back to life, but he never became spirit. You remember that little girl that, that, was, that died and Jesus made everybody get out? He wouldn't get all the believers, unbelievers out of the room. Brought her back to life. She was dead. She came back to life. But she never resurrected and became spirit. Do you all remember when Jesus went and they said, Jesus, if you had only been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. And he had been, he had been dead several days. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. They said, he, his, his, his body is stinking. He came forth. He came back to life, but he never resurrected and became spirit. Jesus is the only one that has ever risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. He's the only one, brothers and sisters. Because Christ, the first fruits, 
What about everybody else? Well, every man in his own order. Christ is the first fruits to have risen from the dead and become spirit. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. It won't happen until he comes again. And when he comes, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us that will remain shall be caught up and we're going to be like he is. We, are, we will become spirit at his coming. That's when we become spirit. On the way of learning something, you can learn something. Mama and them, grandmama and them are not died and gone to heaven and become a spirit. It's, no, it don't happen until this time comes. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. That's what happens. So what about this first fruits? What is that supposed to mean? What is really going on here with this first fruits? And what is that? Let's go to Colossians, the book of Colossians real quick, the first chapter. Colossians 1. Because even the apostle wrote to the Colossians and he says, listen, um, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Jesus is the firstborn. He's the first fruits. He's the first one that have come through the flesh, died, buried, resurrected, and become spirit. Well, let's go learn something about the first fruits and why Mary could not touch him. So let's go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Don't worry, we're going to be finished in time for the Q&A on uh, IOG channel. Listen to this. In the book of Leviticus, Jesus, uh, I'm sorry, the Lord speaks to Moses and said, listen, I'm going to give you all the feast days. Read this on your own because all the feast days that the Lord wants Israel and the world to keep is right here in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. We're not going to get into all of them. But this is the one we're going to get into. Verse 9. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you come into the land which I give to you, and when you reap the harvest, ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. Now, there's a reason why they have to do that. It's because when you get, it's a measurement. Give the first fruits of your harvest, a measurement, out of respect, give it to the priest. And when you give it to the priest, here are the rules of, engage, uh, uh, rules of engagement. He's got to wave that sheaf before the Lord. So you're going to take it to the priest, but the priest is going to wave it before the Lord to be accepted for you. When will he do that? On the morrow, after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Now, this is important because Jesus is the first fruits of the harvest. On the morrow, after the Sabbath, when the harvest comes forth, whenever the harvest comes forth, you must wait until the weekly Sabbath and the morrow after the Sabbath, which is the first day of the week, you got to give it to the priest to be waved. Wow. Let's look down a little bit more. When you get your harvest, you shall not eat the bread, that's the wheat, the parched corn, the green ears, when you get your harvest out of the ground, if it comes out on a Monday, 
you got to wait until the weekly Sabbath, that's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sabbath, the morrow after the Sabbath, you got to give it to the priest to wave. And after you give it to the priest to wave on the morrow after the Sabbath, then you can eat it. Then you can eat it. And when you do it, you got to bring a lamb. You got to offer that day when you wave the sheaf, a lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. This, brothers and sisters, lets you know that Jesus could not have resurrected on a Sunday in the morning because if he's the first fruit, he hasn't been waved. You got to wait till the following Sabbath and then the morrow after the Sabbath, you could wave it. Why? Because whenever your harvest comes out of the ground, anywhere from Sunday to the following Sabbath, if it makes it out of the ground between the first day and the seventh day before the sun goes down and starts the first day, then you can wave it the next day. If it comes out of the ground, let's go to the calendar and we're going to show you something. See, this is what we like to do. We like to go to the calendar and show you something. And here it is, brothers and sisters, so you can see it. Right here. If the first fruits, and I'm just going to use these days up here. First day, second day, third day. If your harvest comes out of the ground right here on a Monday, you cannot eat it until the morrow after the Sabbath, which is going to be here, then you can eat it. If we say Jesus resurrected on a Sunday, you got to wait here to the following week, then wave him and you could touch it. Because that's the similitude of don't eat neither bread nor parched corn ears until the self-same day that you waved the sheaf offering. So what happened in the year Jesus was crucified, it was in the middle of the week. Three days later, one, two, three, well, it's before the sun goes down, it's the seventh day of the week. Well, guess what? On the morrow after the Sabbath, you got to wave it. And that's what happened. But Jesus, you cannot eat it or you cannot touch it until the selfsame day that you wave it. Then you can eat it. And this is why, brothers and sisters, he told Mary, don't touch me because when I get my harvest, I got to bring it, the first fruits of that, to the priest. Who is Jesus? He's the first to be resurrected from the dead to become spirit. So what has to happen? We've got to wave him to be accepted. When do you do that? Since he resurrected on the Sabbath, on the morrow after the Sabbath, which is the first day of the week. So what happened? Right here in the book of of John, Jesus resurrected on the Sabbath, and the very next day, Mary Magdalene see him. Why is Jesus waiting? He's waiting to go up to his father to be waved. So he tells Mary, don't touch me. Touch me not. Don't touch me because I have not yet been waved. I'm getting ready to go up and be waved. And when I come back, guess what? When I come back, you can touch me. So therefore, in the book of Luke, he said, guess what? It's me. Handle me. 
touch me. It's me. It's me, you guys. Handle me. Here we go. Behold my hands, my feet. Handle me. Now I can be touched because I've been waved and I'm the first fruits. Brothers and sisters, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Let the words of your mouth and the meditation of your heart, let it be acceptable in his sight. The Lord be our strength and our redeemer. Tune over to IOG Wednesday night Q&A. You will learn even more. God bless you.